Hi, I'm Dr. Cara Doherty. I work with Unique Crystals, which we hope one day we can use to purify and treat water. In chemistry terms, they are called MOFs, or metal organic frameworks, and this is what they look like. On a molecular level, if we could see it, these crystals actually look a bit like a sponge, but unlike a sponge that has a pretty random assortment of holes in it, some big and some small, MOFs can be made with very specifically sized holes. This is how they can be used to help filter water or store gases. But more on that in a minute. First, how do we make them? Basically, we combine the metal components together with the organic linkers, and under the right conditions, they self-assemble into these porous crystals. We then take this crystal and look at it with x-rays, and we can actually work out where every single atom is inside that crystal, and what it's doing, and what it could be used for. If we take a look at this giant video display in our 3D cave, you can see quite clearly the structure of the moth crystals and the uniform pore sizes. You can see how they contain really uniform ordered pores, and it's these designer nooks and crannies that make them useful as filters. You see, the final crystals have a really high surface area. In fact, just one teaspoon of these crystals has the same surface area as the MCG. If you take a look at this time-lapse vision, you can see how the moths can absorb the molecules from solution. You can see the dye solution becomes clear over time as the dye molecules are pulled into the uniform pore channels of the crystals. Over time, the crystals become the colour of the dye and the dyed solution clears. This shows us how porous crystals can be used to clean up toxins from wastewater systems. We can also do another demo to show you how we can store large volumes of gases into small spaces. For this one, we can use two balloons filled with a gas, in this case, CO2. The balloons are attached to a glass container, one that is filled with moth crystals and the other one without crystals. Over time, the moth crystals will absorb and store the gas and the balloon will eventually deflate, whereas the balloon with no moth crystals will stay inflated. So basically, the large volumes of gases from the balloons are now stored into these small crystals down here. So being able to store these large volumes of gases into small crystals means that they could potentially be used in the transport industry for the storage of gases such as methane or hydrogen. It is also hoped that by developing these materials with such high surface areas, we will eventually be able to use them in portable type filtration devices. There's still a lot of work to be done, but it is my hope that one day we can take these tiny crystals into remote locations so that we can use them to clean up wastewater systems so that the water can be drinkable again.